Welcome to Love in the Love Boat, where we break down episodes of one of the greatest romantic comedy drama television series of all time. I'm Ishvan, Chicagoland's beloved children's musician and TV fanatic. And I'm Michelle, pop culture enthusiast. So come aboard. We're expecting you to join us for another edition of Love, Love in the, the Love Boat. Boat. Hi, you guys. Welcome back or welcome to the show. If you have not heard our maiden voyage from uh, episode one of season one, we are, of course, embarking on episode two. And I would also like to say hello to my co-host, Michelle. Hello. Michelle. Yes. This episode, in my opinion, really just like hit it hard right away. Would you agree? Yeah, it sure did. I know you're particularly a fan of this episode. <laughs> I love this one because I just want to get the sadness out of the way. R.I.P. John Ritter. John Ritter is fantastic. I, I, it reminds you so much of how great he was and how charming and how charismatic he was and such a funny, comedic actor. It, he's awesome in this. And the thing with this one is they really rocked out and they established these three stories, which are O'Dale written by Carl Kleinschmidt, The Main Event, written by Rick Callahan, and A Tasteful Affair, written by Ben Jolson and Art Bear. Should we do the the people, our guest stars, who, who are on this on this episode? Sure, we sure. We should do each one by maybe the title of the I can't do that. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just gonna have to give you who's on the show. Today we have Dennis Cole. Um, for all you people out there, Dennis Cole, you'll remember, blonde haired, very handsome man. Um, Tova Feldsha. Now, hang on. I wrote this one down special. This is, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Terry Sue Tova in quotations, Feldsha. She's also like, I've watched the, the Walking Dead. I enjoy the Walking Dead. She's Deanna Monroe. If you guys remember when they went to the town, and had the walls built up and like she videotapes everybody as they come into town. That's her. Um, she's on this as a very unstable, emotional person. Sherman Hemsley, I don't have to tell you who that is. Prog Rock fans, you know Sherman Hemsley, right? LaWanda Page, guys, Michelle, who? She would be Aunt Esther from Sanford and Son. Yes. Uh, John Ritter, who I've mentioned already, and Jacqueline Smith, the beautiful Jacqueline Smith. Now, when I was mentioning how they started this off, like real, they, they start with her, Jacqueline Smith and Dennis Cole. They are intertwined. And they don't mention, I, I was telling you this earlier today, we don't have the name of the person who plays her husband because the scenario that they start with, like from the jump, is with Jacqueline Smith and her husband played by we need to get this person's name because he was spectacular as far as being sort of like I mentioned in the last episode, the whole soap opera nature of this, like really, really playing this role of the heavy sort of spouse who isn't attentive to his wife really well. You sure you don't mind me going alone? Why would I? You've always been able to take care of yourself. I know. I've had lots of practice. Janet, please. You know this is a particularly difficult time for me to be away from the office. It's always a bad time. Ever since we've been married, Christmas is a bad time. Easter's a bad time. Summer's a bad time. Somebody has to pay the bills. The expensive penthouse apartment, the summer house, the fancy cars. They all cost money. I don't give a damn about those things, Lucas. And I'd like to add a side note to this, that Jacqueline Smith and Dennis Cole were married in real life during this time period. They had met on the set of Charlie's Angels. And, um, yes, we're married for, I think, three or four years. I had so no idea. You didn't? I thought I no. brought that up when we were watching. No, I didn't know about the Susan. You have all the info because I didn't know about the Susan Actually, Summers In fact, thing. I know which episode they met on Charlie's Angels. They were in Aspen. <laughs> I'll save that for another podcast. Well, I also said they were like the most beautiful <laughs> couple. She's so pretty in this episode, and then he's so handsome. And it's like they make a great couple. I mean, that's incredible. That's like that's Lee Majors, Farrah Fawcett level couple, yeah, they power couple. Were a late seventies, early eighties power couple. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that. All right, well, that that's the thing. They're seen as like, and this I would say I really related to this one because I over the years have hired private detectives to follow Michelle. Just to see what she's doing now with COVID, it's like you don't have to do that. I've saved a bundle. Just on really them. nothing. I'm just sitting either on the couch playing Animal Crossing or right. so working the, at the dining room table. But um, he is a private investigator in this, hired by her husband, played by a guy who's really good, whose name I don't know, and he's meant to follow her, like because he doesn't trust her, and she's going on this cruise. He thinks she's going on the cruise to meet somebody. 
And that's why she's so miserable. But she wasn't. She really is just like, she, as Dennis Cole says later, you are the like the dream wife or whatever. He, he, he went back to report that to him towards the end. So they start with that, but the acting is really intense and it's really, really good. Jacqueline Smith is so fantastic in this. And, and again, you're all in from the beginning on a soap opera level. But much like the last one, they hit you next with Sherman Hemsley and Aunt Esther. Hello, I'm Julie McCoy, your cruise director. I'm here to see you have a good time. Well, where have you been for the past 23 years, honey? Huh? <laughs> uh, we're the Marshalls. Um, you probably heard of me, Maurice Marshall, the sausage king. Oh, what a cute car. It's shaped like a little sausage. You ought to see his legs. <laughs> and uh, they, they come on the ship... <laughs> Sherman Hensley is uh, the sausage king. <laughs> a he sausage. owns a sausage factory. Yeah, he's and selling sausages. Aunt Esther just kind of does not want to hear about sausages because he anymore. brings them like in the luggage to pass out to people on the ship. It's just well, he has intentions of doing. That's a relief from the sausage, although that's the conundrum because that's what's sending you on the cruise, really. But they show up on the cruise, and they are you know immediately funny. And then our third is John Ritter, distraught over his girlfriend, who really just is not into it. And John Ritter really, quite honestly, he breaks about 14 laws within the first 10 minutes of the show, five minutes in the show. Like theft, he steals clothes and a wig. from Kind of stalky. Yeah, he's stalky <laughs> of this woman because she's just not into, into him, really. And then he also is like, pretending to be somebody else so he can get onto the ship, which... Well, the story is he wants to buy a ticket on the cruise because this girl that he's following is on there that has no interest in him. But there's no rooms available unless he shares a room with another woman, but they cannot rent the room or give him the room because he's a man. So right. that sets off him deciding he's going to dress like a woman. That's the best, like that trope. I mean, that classic... Stealing luggage from other women... Yeah, it's just Finding like... Finding clothes that fit him perfectly, <laughs> including <laughs> shoes, right. and dressing as a woman. And a beautiful gown later on that we will see. But that's the thing, is like back in the day, you know, it's like people dressing in drag. That was kind of like a, a mainstay of when we were growing up. But he does it really, really well. There's a lot of funny physical comedy that I laugh at every single time. Because the other part of this that becomes so enjoyable for me, and I think Michelle would agree is that who falls for John Ritter when he is in, and hang on, does maybe the worst female voice of all time. You're a lucky young lady, Miss Riley. A man wanted this face, but I couldn't sell it to him. Just be thankful you're a woman. Oh, I am, believe me. I enjoy being a girl. <laughs> I bet you the boys enjoy it too. Only if I let them. <laughs> and so who... Falls for John Ritter as he's dressed as a woman, Michelle? The captain. Captain Meryl Steubing, of course. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And we covered this of how amazing Gavin McLeod is. He, nobody can do what he did as well, I don't think, as he does in this. Because he really, like, makes you believe it, yet he's being very campy in how he's doing it. Yet it still is believable in that he is, like, falling and thinking that John Ritter, who, who is so obviously not a woman in this, <laughs> but the way that he plays it is still funny to this day, in my opinion. Even Doc doesn't fall for her as a woman. <laughs> he, well, that's not his type. No, that's confusing, though, because in the beginning, he does say something almost as if he, he says, be still my heart, but then maybe he was joking and I just misunderstood that, because towards the end, yeah, he's not, uh, he's not into John But yeah, the captain's, uh, like, pursuit of john ritter as a female is kind of old school comedy oh yeah absolutely but he does it so well i mean yeah. he like does it amazingly well it's th this is the part of it where you guys need to go and watch this because there is like i said where john ritter is he's in pursuit of this other woman at some point right two women actually on the boat and well, when he's he... roommates the woman that he ends up being a roommate with on the ship because i didn't tava even... She is on this cruise on her by herself because she was supposed to be on her honeymoon with her husband, but he never Jerry. even showed up to the wedding. He left with another woman. 
And that's basically John Ritter's storyline where his girlfriend left him for another man because she doesn't like his jalopy. She likes this other man for his Mercedes, and she met him at a car wash. And so they both have that in common with one another. But I'm just saying that, like, when he's, like, running to go meet with this woman, you know, frantically while he's in drag, him running down the, you know, the corridor is very funny because he his physical humor is, like, exceptional you know what I mean he was really really amazing and that's it and then watching Gavin McLeod and the way that he does things and just his gestures his facial expressions they're they truly are very very funny um well that's the thing the Tava person is completely unstable she's crying in a room as Michelle said why is she already in her nightgown (laughs) yeah when John Ritter's character shows up they're they just got on the cruise and she's already in like a nightgown we have never been on, on her bed. Right. We haven't been on cruises, though. So maybe we're not aware that, like, maybe you immediately change into your <laughs> nightgown. It's, it's custom. The daytime before you. You, you get checked in, <laughs> you go up to your little cabin, and you get into like your evening pajama wear or whatever, r- regardless of what's going on next. Now, um, the one, the storyline that they really follow the most is, uh, I would say, like the Jacqueline Smith one and the. Yeah, it's Dennis really, Cole. it's pretty intricate because. And rightfully so, because it's a good one. It is a good one. And like I was saying to Michelle also earlier today, like Dennis Cole, it's a master class in reactions because for the first half of like the cruise, he is just watching her from a distance, you know, potentially with another man. And then he realizes, no, that was just a chance encounter. And then you see him crumple up his notes and like just his facial expression. So there's a lot of powerful acting being done without even speaking a word, which I mean, honestly, there's a lot of Emmy-worthy performances on this episode, I believe. It is true. And then they do finally meet another couple, sets them up at a dinner table together. Oh, like a swinger dinner. couple. Yeah, like the weird swinger couple. But And then, of course, he has a tragic story. Who? Dennis Cole, where his oh, wife God, had died. Right. Yeah, it's And terrible. he's taking care of his children. Four children. Four children. Very young children. That, this is a beautiful storyline. I have to be honest, because you really want them to get together. He's such a nice guy on this, on this, you know, that you find out so quickly. They're, they're, it's really lovely. I think that this one is extra special, honestly. I loved it a lot. The other thing is, like, with Sherman Hemsley and Aunt Esther, there's really truly is just total comedic relief, like a, like a sorbet on the, on the uh, cruise. But there's a little confusing where they go like a roller coaster up and down of like loving and then disliking one another, like threatening divorce and then like, I love you. And Lots that was, of insults. <laughs> well, you would imagine there's going to be insults if Aunt Esther is involved. Lawanda Page. Yes, but it's like um, that part was a little like, whoa, they're, they're all of a sudden they like each other and then they don't like each other. But they've been together for quite some time and theirs is just strictly comedic and they follow it for the appropriate amount of time. This is a fantastic episode. Episode two, just like kills it i think yeah we haven't even touched on their storyline really because they're fighting they're going to go to dinner he brings the sausages and makes (laughs) her put them in his purse so there's like a running joke where everybody asks like do they smell perfume or do they smell sausages when they walk by but it turns out they're fighting so much and pushing all these buttons in the elevator that they break the the elevator (laughs) and then they're stuck in the elevator for most of the episode right so that's not really trying to get out arguing then not arguing yeah they're just they're back and forth uh it's i don't know it's 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 what it is actually but they work it out in the elevator in this episode too one of the things that's pretty uh, astounding not outstanding is that they made attempted suicide funny Kind of so, yeah, because <laughs> both John Ritter's character and the female are both going to jump overboard, yeah. which I can't think of anything more horrific. No, let me, wait, let me prove it to you. It'd be easy. Just step up on the rail, jump, and they'd never find my body. My mother would hate that. She wouldn't have anything to bury. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Dead is a lousy way to oh, live. I don't know anything about it. I know your mother would hate it. What? Both your parents. Death always makes them feel like failures. And over what? Some guy? It's not worth it. Look, I was just about to do the same thing myself over there. I know what I'm talking about. You what? Yes. And if you kill yourself, I couldn't kill myself. People would think I'm a copycat. <laughs> Let me put it another way. Have you ever dived off something this high before? No. Well, it's got to be 100 feet. You could kill yourself. Yeah, you're right. 
Sure. I could kill myself. Yeah. So how about it, lady? You want to get down now? Yeah. Okay, can I give you a hand? Yes. <laughs> 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 it's like... He, you know, they both are contemplating ending it all because they they have, you know, they've been jilted Rejected. by love. And then, you know, they find one another. One of my favorite parts, parts like I always say, there are parts during the show that both of us will laugh at. Either just like the, the sort of like absent-minded, genuine laugh, you know, that's a smaller laugh and then a bigger one. My bigger one is when John Ritter, full on with this roommate person who has yet to find out that he's a man, <laughs> they're, they're in the dining area. And then they're looking at his, whatever she is, the girlfriend person. They're both dressed like Jim Jones. <laughs> they have weird sunglasses on. Inside, dining. <laughs> and he does look like Jim Jones. He's got like the hair like Jim Jones. And then she has weird like sunglasses on. And then she keeps looking John Ritter's way. And John Ritter keeps looking her way, right? Because he's there for her, obsessed. And then he screams at her like... And it made me laugh so hard because he sells it so hard. He looks hilarious. I mean, he does look funny. I think he had a big polka dot dress on during this period of time. And that stuff, again, it made me miss John Ritter, like, kind of a lot, it's for true. real. But um, th- that's, and back to, like, them both trying to jump overboard. He is not dressed as a female. He's dressed just as his regular male self. And right. That's how they meet again. Because she doesn't realize that he's the roommate, even though he looks exactly <laughs> the roommate to me yeah but that's still see that's like a really cool for a sitcom that's a really good that's good writing because then he's just dressed as himself that's how they meet one another and uh and then he saves her during that point and then she really genuinely well, he, becomes yeah, interested. he tries to pull her back onto the ship then of course she slips and she falls into the water anyway again <laughs> completely horrifying and that's another thing like he's already stolen something he's already uh, misled them to get onto the cruise and then they both like go overboard which that prompts seems... this whole like quick like montage scene of uh you see captain stooping on a on a walkie-talkie oh, that's the best. man overboard man overboard and then you see a whole series <laughs> of them like trying to well you don't actually see them rescuing them but they, they show them like lowering the little boat it's a terrible it's a terrible montage of things and the next scene they're just drying off in their room as if nothing happened no consequences well that's the story you tell your kids like how we met was like we both tried to kill ourselves and then we jumped over the side of a ship or no we fell off the side of a ship and then we start we started to really get to know one another and fall in love all right here's something (laughs) else now hang on let's let's jump let's jump to my favorite the beautiful jacqueline smith the gorgeous dennis cole is it Dennis Cole? Am I right? Yes. Okay. And they this in this scene, the thing I discovered, not only was it how they became like like aware that they were being attracted to one another, that they were destined to be together. I have discovered, maybe many of you people, you already knew this, that the trombone, an instrument I associate with comedy, is really a very romantic instrument. Oh, here she is. Hi, Hi. Say hello to Dennis Kingsley. Dennis, Jeanette Bradford. How are you? Nice to know you. You look beautiful, Jeanette. Thank you. Don't you just love getting dressed for dinner? It makes me feel so festive. Yes, uh, Dennis just said the same thing. Well, we lovers of elegance better stick together. Why? Oh, I'd love some. It's a very good year. What better way to start a very good evening? To a festive night. Yeah, so after this uh, particular scene, those two, um, it, it, it has tipped. They've, they've reached a tipping point to where like they really are attracted to one another. And then they find themselves in that pool area just dancing together. Very romantic, honestly. It was, this, this was an incredible storyline, these two together. And I didn't realize they were married. So it makes all the sense in the world of why they were so good together. But this is the part, no joke to you guys out there, that where real acting is on display in these little sections that like I seriously sit there engrossed. It's it's really enjoyable. And then again, it never takes too long for them to kind of like uh, uh, take you to another place that is more lighthearted. And I love that about the show. But after that, they're conflicted, you know, and Jacqueline Smith doesn't want to go 
uh, down that path because she still is married. And she said, even though my marriage is is not the best, I still, you know, I still took a vow. And this is when I didn't understand this part, though. Like, she's asking where he is this one day. Oh, it's the morning and she's getting uh, cinnamon rolls. Yeah, but wait, Julie. Where, where were they, though? Like, did he were they docked or something? No, How did they, he fly they... back to Los Angeles? Who knows? Maybe they had made a stop in Mazatlan or something. Well, John, John Ritter had a Mazatlan t-shirt. So on. I guess they stopped in Mazatlan if he did have the t-shirt on. Yeah, they just didn't show it. Oh, okay, because he flies home. Dennis Cole flies back to Los Angeles to give the dude his money back because he didn't want to take it um, because he had fallen for his wife and he didn't feel right. And then she was confused, and then he came back, and they had an encounter. Jeanette, I have to explain. You don't have anything to explain. Please hear me out. I came back for two reasons. The first is something I should have told you long ago. I, I tried on deck the other night, but... Look. Your husband hired me to take this cruise to watch you. flew back to Los Angeles and gave him his money back. He told me you're the best wife a man could have. Thank you. The second reason I'm here is I had to tell you I love you. I know how you must feel, but if in time you... Well, I'll be waiting. And then shortly after this, then, you know, John Ritter's all elated because... He had gone back with Tava after they had had that moment together. He, you know, it's revealed that he's a man, and then they. Yeah, there's fall. a really interesting scene where they're walking back, him as the female character to the room, and then behind closed doors. Oh, gross! Yeah. It's kind of awkward. She discovers he is not a female. She does the fat. It's also the famous like. Oh, Dale said, oh, Dale said, oh, Dale. <laughs> yeah. So we're to assume that at some point he revealed himself to be a man. Oh, you know what else I wanted to do earlier. during this episode? I wanted to offer anybody out there, any aspiring or, or established filmmakers or TV makers, showrunners, if you're needing someone for music, you got to let me know because I'd be more than happy to provide that music for you. But I just want you to know that you will be getting a bass line like this. All right. But at the end, after all of that, you know, we we have a very light like um resolution of they're Sherman Hemsley. are getting married in 2 weeks. No, 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 no. I was just going to say Sherman Hemsley, those guys, they're theirs is very quick and very lighthearted and they're on their way. But yeah, um uh, John Ritter's character comes down with his Mazatlan t-shirt on, very very happy in good spirits and he's saying that he's wants to book another cruise in 2 weeks cuz what Michelle just said they're going to get married <laughs> and, two, and, and and they'll be back in two weeks for their honeymoon. Right. There's no, If there's anything I can say about the love boat, you find a romantic partner. You will be married within a day yeah. of docking. Like people get married all the time, almost immediately. Yeah. There's something in the shrimp cocktail the love boat. or something like that, except the only guy that doesn't score is the captain oftentimes. He gets he gets denied a lot of the time. So we're rooting for when Captain Steubing, you He's know, a busy man. He has a ship to run. I know. But he was still really trying hard. He was going for the hoop with John Ritter and drag in this episode. But they uh, he says that the captain says, you know, he thinks he recognizes him. And there is a lovely, funny scene. Hi. Hi. I'd like to book passage on the same cruise in two weeks. Certainly, sir. Well, you must have really enjoyed it. Uh, yes, we. I mean, I did. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's funny. I try to meet all the passengers on the ship, and I don't seem to remember meeting you. Oh, well, I stayed in my cabin most of the time. Uh, that's a reservation for Mr. But, but, you know, you do look familiar to me. Looks familiar to me, too, sir. <gasps> yes. I, 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 are you sure we haven't met? Positive. But... I do remember peeking out of my cabin one night and seeing you by the linen closet with a big redhead. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, as I said, uh, I try to meet everyone. That's a reservation for Mr. and Mrs. Dale Reinhardt. Oh, you're married? No, but I will be by then. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye! <laughs> And that's about it for this one. This one, like I like I said, they they nailed it in the second episode, in my opinion. 
because they really do establish it hard in the beginning, like in a really, really substantial and impressive way. And then this one, they followed the right ones, I think, for the right amount of time, the right storylines for the right amount of time. And there was, again, exceptional, I think, acting, both comedic and otherwise, in this episode. I love this episode. I give this one, like, what? What's like a thing on the love boat that you could get? Oh, and we saw me on the ship. I said if we go on a, a, a cruise ever, I told Michelle, I warned her in advance that I will be buying a captain's hat in the uh, in the souvenir shop or whatever and wearing it for the entire duration. And when Jacqueline Smith comes out towards the end, there's an old man sitting there <laughs> with a little one. He had a blue captain's hat on. I'm like, there I am. <laughs> I'm just sitting there playing solitaire or something like that. I'll probably be at the nacho bar. <laughs> no way. There's yeah, no. so much booze on a, on a cruise ship, man. There's no way that you aren't going to be there. But maybe, yeah, not, the Nachos nacho bar. Nachos and margaritas. Well, my private investigator will be following you around the ship, so I'll know where you are at all times. Thanks so much for joining us on the second all-star episode, in my opinion. Uh, We hope you guys are enjoying the show. We certainly are. And again, we are not sponsored by Paramount Plus, but if you can, get it. And there's not only the Love Boat on there, but many, many great programs for you to watch. And you can follow along or watch this after you listen to the show. But until next time, and let me thank Michelle... Thank you so much. When I opened the refrigerator today, I told you guys I wanted shrimp cocktail every day. There was a thing of shrimp in there. And I asked where it's the just getting, shrimp. Just get in the mood set. Captain Stewie, Captain Stewie, please cover the bridge. But until next time, we're loving the love boat. Bye, you guys. Bye.